Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to start a few minutes early. Um, do we have anybody who has never been here before? Everybody's been here before? Okay. Today we have a very exciting day. <clears throat> Besides our, our two guest speakers, Mike and Bob, uh, we have uh, one uh, performance before we begin. My granddaughter, gymnastics, Sherry Kravitz, all the way from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Uses his 
Nikon. Now he, he has, I mean, it's, it's, we both have very good cameras. I mean, they're really, I have an Nikon, uh, I'm sorry, Bob has an Nikon, and I have a camera. And we have made good use of those, particularly when it comes to uh, winning photographs. Um, but again, I want to emphasize that as, as impressed as you are with your iPhone, still there's no way that you can compare to what you can normally get with the bigger, clumsier cameras that we generally use, particularly when we go out on photo shoots. Two particular areas. We lack the controls on an iPhone that you have on the bigger, more professional cameras. We don't get the kind of detail in the lights and darknesses that you can normally get uh, on the DSLR, the expensive cameras. And we just don't really get the resolution and detail, the pixels in the detail that we can get on the bigger camera. But still, you can do quite well. The difference is here, if we were to use a DSLR on a photograph like this, a landscape, we'd be able to really bring out detail and uh, in the clouds. We could probably do a little bit better on some of the controls that you have for finishing a photograph in photos, or what we used to call iPhotos, uh, which is, uh, if I can uh, bring it up here, uh, right down here. This has controls, which I'll get into briefly, uh, that you can really bring out a lot of details, colors, and resolution with. But in any event, let me just go and start off uh, <coughs> first with uh, uh, landscaping, the kind of photographs that I'm able to get on landscaping with, with an iPhone. Now, you'll notice on this iPhone, and I did a terrible thing here, I used Zoom to bring <coughs> the that you see down in the branch that you see in the valley a little bit closer. And my advice is never, never use Zoom unless you absolutely have to, because you lose a lot of the detail. It doesn't really focus very well. And giving you an idea, you can see along here, you can see little dots and such. That's where the photograph begins to break up. Uh, and normally, if I were to use a single lens reflex along with the zoom potential on that, you would see none of those little specks that you can see in the sky and in the ridge. But still, keep in mind we're looking at a screen size here that's infinitely bigger than anything that you could possibly consider using an iPhone for, because for the most part you'll never go beyond practically the size is five by seven, or moreover, you'll be using it to display your photographs or sending them out either on an iPhone or on a laptop. And that'll be about the biggest. Maybe some people who have a desktop with a 27 inch screen would be able to go bigger. But practically speaking, 99.7% of the time, you will never, you never need to blow up a photograph that size. If you were to look at the same photograph on my screen here, you would still see some of the specs. But if I were to email this to somebody and they looked at either on their iPad or their iPhone, they wouldn't really be able to see that. All they'd be able to see was the kind of, of uh, photograph that you have here. Uh, moving on, uh, one of the important things when you're taking landscape shots is to frame it. I can't emphasize the importance of taking a few seconds out to frame it. This, for example, normally you hear a lot, and Marilyn, are you here today? No, she's not. She has spoken a lot in the past about uh, the uh, so-called uh, use of thirds. That is, you put a principal focus of your landscape or photograph over either on the right third the left third of the screen, the top third, or the bottom third. In this case, I put it right in the middle. 
because so many things will direct you to the principal object here, the focal point of the photograph, which is this little ranch house. And this was taken, by the way, uh, in the Abruzzi Mountains in Italy. If you drove straight from Rome about an hour and a half, you'd be in the setting such as this. Uh, but this, uh, uh, if you blinked when you're going up the mountain road, going past this, if you blinked, you would miss this completely. And this is the other aspect of landscape. <coughs> Any kind of photograph that you take uh, with your iPhone, uh, it's, it's extremely important uh, that you not be destination focused. A lot of people can go from point A to point B and see absolutely nothing on their left and right. And as a result, they would miss this sort of thing. So you've got to learn or to try to concentrate on being detail focused rather than destination focused. You're going to get your best shots with a detail focus. And that is, I know it's difficult when you're driving a car, but in the case of all my, all my life, all my professional life, I've been detail focused because before I retired, I was a foreign correspondent and a senior editor for one of the major American newspapers, and we had to focus on detail uh, for just about everything that we did. So I'm constantly shifting my eyes to the right and left. As long as I know that I can drive safely, I have. It's a little more difficult in the mountains, but one day I was driving by and I saw this. I went about 100 meters too far and I had to back up it, but this I got. And I took the same photo from the same area with <coughs> my DSLR <coughs> about three or four years earlier and uh, I got uh, uh, something that won uh, a couple of ribbons in the local and state photo contest. So this is what you can, what you can actually get as long as you maintain an awareness of detail and constantly be aware of, of the handy, excuse me just a moment, go ahead. No, was, was that uh, edited other than maybe cropping? Did you uh, edit the colors or anything? Um, on this one, uh, what I did was using only the <coughs> controls available <coughs> in photos, I was able to bring out more colors and bring out more detail, put a little darkness, and this is what you can do. And time permitting, uh, I'll be able to go into to show you how you can do this and what you already have available in photos. Uh, but I darkened off the foreground here so it wouldn't interfere with the focus. But keep in mind, see these lines? These are directional lines, and you'll hear me talking about this again, particularly in landscaping. This is another directional line. Here is another one. And they will lead you right into the key part of the photograph. So remember, whether it's a road, whether it's a river, whether it's an architectural line, you've got to try to think, how does the lines and what I'm looking at in the viewfinder or on the back of my iPhone, how does it uh, lead you, uh, lead the viewer into being able to focus on the principal point that you're trying to make in the photograph. I'll we'll go over some of the others. Um, this again was taken in Italy. I have two elements here. Most people would focus on the hilltop village right here. Uh, but I saw this church over here on the left and I figured that this would create a different type of a photograph that most people would use. Uh, over here is a picture that I took in, uh, on a cruise in the South Pacific. Uh, this was on the island of, uh, of Bora Bora. And again, the importance of framing. Most people would have stood in a place where this wouldn't interfere with the mountain in the background. However, I believe that it really contributes to the photograph by being able to put a frame which is what I had here in the beginning. You get a good concept of the lagoon here, but here again, the frame just sort of directs your attention to what really is the focal point of the photograph, at least as I saw it and I thought everybody else looking at this photograph uh, should see. Uh, here's another interesting element about landscaping that you should always keep in mind. This was taken in Glencoe, Scotland. Uh, a river runs right through the, 
uh, mountains in the Scottish Highlands in the north. Uh, if I were to have taken this picture without a person in the foreground, just by luck, this uh, woman who was uh, on the bus decided to go walk down to the river and she stood there. It's my belief that had she not been in this photograph, I would not have had the good focal point that I needed to bring out this landscape. To me, it creates a mood that adds to the mood already of the darkened skies and the shades that you get across the entire uh, panorama. Um, she, she just directs your eyes right to her, and you wonder, what is she doing there? What is she thinking of? Uh, this, again, is creating a mood. And once again, you can do this with your iPhone. You just have to put a little thought when you're looking through that viewfinder. Move it around and see what looks better to you. And if you can't find a focal point, then send one of your grandchildren out or either or a, a spouse and have them do something so it will give somebody the concept of perspective. They will see, oh yes, that's the size of a person. Therefore, wow, this is really a vast expanse that we're looking at. Um, here again, uh, more of a panorama here, and I'll get into the panoramas uh, in just a moment. Uh, my wife Liliana is standing up in uh, Lake Louise in British Columbia. Uh, the mountains are the focus, but yet if she was not there, I think the photograph would have lost a little interest. No matter that she was my wife, but rather any person who was there. I have her facing the camera because the picture was to show her against this background. But normally you would want a person looking out into the scene. So again, it would direct her focus right out into uh, uh, the beautiful landscape. Uh, this also was taken the Abruzzi Mountains in this Italy, just east of Rome. and. Uh, Without the cattle in the picture, I don't think it would be as good a picture. You would not have had the perspective. You can see by the cows in here, uh, the uh, um, just you know how big the lake is. You've got a, uh, an object by which you can compare the dimensions. Um, also, I don't, I don't know. I just think that this would be really much less of a photograph unless I have these objects of focus right in here now. Most people, and I've watched them do this at the same location, they would think, oh, wow, look at the cows. And the first thing they do is run right up and they take a picture of the cows up close, <coughs> uh, missing out on this, to me, an incredible landscape. Uh, this is another aspect of, again, uh, looking at the perspective. A lot of people would have just stood up and, take, and would have taken the picture uh, of the mountains and the flowers here. In this case, I was right down about maybe a foot off the ground and was able to bring in more colors and a different sort of perspective. So don't be afraid to bend down, crouch down, or move your camera around to get uh, what to me is a more interesting photograph. Um, here again, uh, we're talking about uh, leading lines. Um, two, two elements of focus here. One is the flowers. The other is the leading line here in the river that takes you right back up into what is the mountain below. And this again is in the part of the uh, And don't, don't uh, get the idea that, uh, oh, oh, here we go. Don't get the idea that you have to be in Italy to get pictures like this, because if you can see some of the pictures that Bob takes in the other place, and some of those that I've taken in the other way, you get the, you get the idea. Here again, leading the line, the road leads you right into the houses and into the mountains. Um, uh, here again, you get the panorama, which would be much less unless the woman was walking down the stairs on the right-hand side. So don't wait until that person gets out of the picture. Uh, but they can add to the picture, particularly the landscape type photographs will be taken. Uh, here again, most people would focus on the statues on top of the Rome church called San Giovanni in Laterano. Uh, I went across the street, stood behind the statue of St. Francis, and got this silhouette. 
which again contributes uh, much more to the uh, uh, photograph. Uh, here is another one. Uh, the castle is up here. I didn't zoom in on the castle, which I wouldn't have really wanted to do anyway with an iPhone because it just tears up the resolution completely. But then you stand on a bridge, go over the river, and it leads you down, and you circle right up to the castle. Uh, and here is details that you should look for. Uh, I call this photograph the mighty hand of God. It's a cloud formation, and it's a natural cloud <laughs> formation. The focus really was on uh, this um, uh, castle church, whatever it is. It's a church, actually. Castle church. But then when I saw the cloud, I thought, my gosh, this, this palm right over the church looks like it's, it's the hand of God protecting the church. Uh, and I didn't do anything to alter this photograph. It's exactly the way I took it with the iPhone. Um, and this is a seascape, what you can do if you use the, the editing capabilities of the iPhone. Normally, when you use the iPhone, the bright area like this would get terribly, terribly uh, uh, washed out. But you could actually learn to manipulate the photograph in such a way as that you could get the sunburst here, the sun behind the clouds, and the uh, area right here. And this was taken from a boat, as you can see. Uh, and here again is a panoramic shot, which I'll get into in a moment. Uh, you can uh, actually, uh, this is uh, the Piazza di Spagna in Rome. Uh, where normally you cannot get the entire width of what it is, particularly with all the people around it and the entire little Bernini boat carving, which is right in the center, unless you use Pano in your iPhone. Um, this, this photograph is in Omaha Beach. Again, the importance of an object to focus on. Um, and uh, here again, this happens to be my wife, uh, who was born and raised in Italy, but who has a very deep appreciation for what happened in World War II and how the United States and its allied forces uh, drove the Nazis out of Italy and all the rest of Europe. So we were standing in Omaha Beach, and I was going to walk down to the beach, but I let her go down first. And you can see how this little figure in red contributes so much to what would have been a photograph of uh, just the beach. And you wonder again, knowing it's Omaha Beach, what is she thinking of? She stood there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Back on D-Day on June the 6th in 1944, this entire area was filled with US troops. Uh, the Nazis were on the ridge here, and they were set up with machine guns and an incredible defensive system, but yet the Americans and the Brits came ashore. The Americans came ashore right here in little landing craft, and God knows how many of them died, but this is an extremely historic scene, and if you knew this was Omaha Beach and you saw this person standing here, I think you would develop a greater appreciation for the photograph. It gives you that focal point that's uh, so badly uh, needed. Um, so that's it for this batch. Now, uh, moving on, I mentioned um, oh, Tanner, whatever this is it here. Uh, yeah, the next thing I want to go into is uh, uh, the uh, uh, Panoramas. There is an item in your iPhone. It's called Pano. And if you go to the uh, photograph camera, and at the bottom, uh, just go all the way over to a right where you'll see a device called Pano. And uh, Pano. I'll have to demonstrate how you do it. If I were to take a photograph of uh, this group, I would 
first of all, holding the camera steady is extremely important. So I would face the center, twist over to the right, and press the button right here, and then move my body, shift it all the way around to the right until I got to the edge, and that would give me an entire panorama of everybody in here. And this is some of the things you could do uh, with uh, the panorama function on your iPhone. Very important that you learn how to identify PANO, P-A-N-O, and use it the way I just showed you you should use it. Uh, this is a photograph of St. Peter's Square, and you would never be able to get <coughs> this on your iPhone. Even if you use the wide-angle lens, you would probably have best only to get on the iPhone itself, and if you didn't use the zoom, which I would never recommend that you do, but if you kept it at its widest capability, you probably wouldn't be able to get more than from here to here on it. And if you, uh, if you use the panel function, you can actually rotate it where you could bring in the entire Bernini columns that embrace the square from one end to the other. Uh, something else you can do with panel you would never be able to do uh, with <clears throat> this was a picture that was taken and I forced the colors on this uh, as we were leaving a harbor in France on a princess uh, cruise. Uh, at sunset, I was able to get this type of photograph, again enhanced with the capabilities that you have available inside of your photos app. Um, but here again you can see how the sun here is uh, washed out. Normally with a more expensive camera you could get a more circular sun, which you could, if you worked on this enough, you could actually bring it out. And uh, uh, let me see where we are here. I'm losing my ability to move it from left to right. Okay. Um, so anyway, here's a couple of examples of uh, uh, how you can uh, use the panel. Let me see if I can get something else in here. Uh, here's another one, panel. Uh, you have a question over here. Oh, sorry. How do you push the button down and hold the button, or just push the button down once and then? No, here again, you. Let me show you. If you can see it, if you move, this is where you normally take your photographs. If you move it over to panel right here, then you just. Go over, click the button, go over like this, and click it again. So you have to click it when you begin and click it when you end. Thank you. You bet. And uh, anyway, if you can see here the examples of panel, you can. Uh, uh, I was able to through panel provide a little bit about where it was taking place. Normally I would only be able to get this part of it. Maybe I could get part of the ship if I stood over further to the right, but I couldn't because I'd be in the water if I did at this point. But I was able to show that it was in a harbor, there's a cruise ship here, and this is the French flag right over here. So again, the details that uh, uh, make the photograph. Um, Okay, I don't have to do it this way. Anyway, this, this was the original photograph that I had. But being able to uh, uh, manipulate it, I was able to, uh, wait, can I open oh, it? Can I? No, I can't do it here. Uh, but I was able to enhance it so that I got more detail in the sky, and uh, at least the sun was able to uh, show a little bit better than had I not been able to do it. Um, I hold on a second. Again, here's uh, St. Peter's, but the sky again is all washed out. I do get a bit of a sunburn here. Uh, there is an app that you can buy that will give you a good uh, uh, It's funny, 
won't, uh, won't write it up. Anyway, you get the idea. This on the photograph that you see on the regular screen, either uh, your uh, iPhone, your iPad, or your laptop, would be much better than what you can actually get here. But at least you get an idea as to how you can uh, uh, bring in the details and the color. Uh, again, this is pretty well washed out because of uh, uh, what it happens to uh, be in. Um, OK, moving on. Another important thing I wanted to uh, show here uh, was, uh, again, uh, framing. This was a photograph, I don't know why it's not in there, but in any event, you can see it this way. A close-up of an alligator in the Everglades. You can actually get this kind of a shot. The alligators can be little pussycats sometimes, but, but don't look at them as little kitty cats. That's for darn sure. But in any event, I was able to get this close-up of an alligator, uh, but it's nothing compared to uh, if I were to focus this and concentrate only on the, uh, I don't know why it isn't blowing Try up. Try the space bar. Huh? Hit the space bar. Space bar. Ah, there you go. <laughs> now, if you blow up the larger shot of the alligator, this is sort of yeah, it's downright scary, particularly if you were to look at this on a high-resolution screen that you would get, not through the projector, but rather uh, on your iPhone. You send this to one of your, uh, uh, if, if, if for, for those of us who still have parents, you send this to your parents, and I'll tell you, they will, you will, within seconds, you go, what in the heck are you doing? <laughs> How close were you? Brings out the teeth, huh? How close were you? Uh, I was about five feet away. Oh, five yeah. feet away. Uh, but again, I've been going out into the swamp for, for, for 20 years, and I would not recommend it to anybody who's in use of it. I've been on a lot of swamp walks where you can walk through water that gets up to your chest. And I've gone out there, as Bob has, dozens of times, and uh, for the most part, dealing with alligators, again, I would never recommend you try to get close enough to get this kind of a shot. But in general, in general, most of them, if they see you approach, they'll, they'll go away. I can't think of how often when I was walking through the swamp when I'd see an alligator on a little uh, mound of dirt, walk a little closer, and next thing you know, there's a splash, and he's out of here. The difference is, if it's a female, yes. during the season when they're raising their babies, don't get anywhere near them. The other thing is, in the dry season, when uh, food is a little harder to come by, don't go anywhere near them. This was probably taken in the middle of the uh, uh, rainy season. Um, uh, again, another photograph that was taken, I was able to bring in the sun a little bit. I don't remember how I did this, but I was able to take this from a neighboring uh, mountain top. Uh, again, detail, very important. Uh, I could have stood back uh, about, uh, oh gosh, a hundred uh, feet or more and got more of a panorama, but to me, this cow and the cowbell, again, in the Abruzzi Mountains was something uh, really worth it. Most people would have moved in and taken a photograph of the temple so that it was a standalone. I thought I'd better frame this, and so I was able to use a tree and also uh, um, uh, this, uh, this pond nearby. Thank you for the space bar idea. <laughs> now this was not taken with an iPhone, but it, I could have taken the same picture had I had the iPhone with me. This was of an Osprey that was taken in Marco Island. I'm telling you, you get some great shots around here. Uh, Marco Island on the beach. What? Marco Island? Tiger Tail. Tiger Tail, Tiger Tail Beach, right. Uh, there was a perch there. And this was a baby osprey, just not long out of the nest, probably no more than, uh, uh, than a month old. And he was uh, perched on the, um, and that's telling me that I, 
Uh, I gotta let Bob take over at this point. But anyway, let me just uh, move on here. Uh, again, that was, uh, again, detail and framing, those two important words. I could have taken a close-up of her, but we happened to, this is my wife Liliana again, we happened to be in Rome on the street, and I don't know, to me, bringing in the bell tower in the background, uh, the uh, line of uh, sight uh, leading right up to this area, to me makes a, a far more interesting photograph than I could have had. Here again, the magnificent Everglades. Uh, if you didn't have people in the photograph, you'd get lost in the foliage here. And uh, hold on a second. Again, this is in Naples, Italy. This is Vesuvius. Uh, everybody would have been satisfied to take this kind of a picture showing over the mountains as luck would have it, and again, not being destination oriented, the detail oriented, I saw this couple and I maneuvered in such a way they didn't know I was there. Uh, but I was able to get this uh, picture. Now here's another thing that you have to be aware of. Uh, this is my granddaughter and Liliana, my wife. And this is the Spanish Steps in Rome. Nick knows the name of this church. I, I, I forgot, but it's right on the top of the Spanish Steps. But remember, when you're framing the photograph, Look to see what else is in here. And what distracts from this photograph so much is this woman who's smiling in front and these two uh, girls over here. Had I been aware of framing a little more when taking this picture, I would have maneuvered so as to uh, hide this person and to focus less. Now, there, there is an app that you can get that will um, that will blur the background, but I didn't, wouldn't want to use it in this case uh, because I wouldn't want to blur the church out here. Uh, but, uh, but these two people distract uh, from the uh, photograph. Um, here's another thing, positioning yourself. I was standing way over to the right and I didn't get the concept of how tall uh, this uh, Vatican uh, uh, Swiss guard was. He was about six foot six or seven against these women who were normal size. So I maneuvered myself so that I could frame it so that you get the idea of this guy towering over the, uh, uh, the two women. Um, so anyway, I'm going to stop here and let Bob take over. Far too soon. Huh? Far too soon. OK, I'll just do another one. You tell me when uh, uh, bursts. The other thing I want to really be able to try to persuade you to do it. I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, I can do it on an iPhone, but uh, make a selection. Maybe this is it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but one of the big problems when you take a portrait or a photograph of a person is you catch them in the middle of a blink. But there is the capability on your iPhone that you can take a burst shot by holding down on the on the button that you use to take the picture, hold it and hold it steady, and then you'll see a series of photographs that will uh, look uh, pretty stunning. <coughs> Again, this is so, it's almost like a movie, but it's not the same. But there's one of these, and I think it's the 12th, uh, 12th photograph over to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, this, his eyes are open. His hand is in clear focus. That's Nick, by the way. I'm sorry, Nick. But <laughs> he gets embarrassed by things like this. Uh, but in any event, this is called burst. And it's very important whenever you take a picture of people or a moving object, like a horse um, pulling a, cha a, a chariot on back and forth, <laughs> a horse uh, pulling a wagon or a cart down the street, there's different ways that the horse's feet are positioned so you can get a better photograph. Whenever you can, use burst and you'll eliminate the problem that you have with uh, eyes closed such as this, or you can see the different uh, photographs. Now this is probably only about three or four seconds of burst, but still I was able to at, at least in one of them, get what would have been a, uh, a much more uh, perfect uh, photograph. Um, and uh, there's a number 
of them here. Butterflies, particularly if you're in the swamp and you want to take a picture of a, a butterfly, so that it's, it's, you're losing it on the resolution here. Uh, but uh, butterflies are funny. You have maybe a very brief period to get the, uh, before they either fly away or before you can get the ideal uh, shot. And uh, uh, this will give you several options when their wings are spread out the way it should be and they're uh, more uh, closely in focus. Uh, so uh, you get the, I think I've been uh, pretty clear about what you can do if you use the burst mode capability of your photograph. Uh, Bob, we have another uh, uh, 20 minutes. Okay, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, we're just letting go colors. Uh, colors, it's extremely important that you keep an eye out on detail where you can get some terrific color photographs uh, using the uh, uh, ice cream, uh, uh, the variety of colors, a bunch of Pinocchios. I really like this Pinocchio shot here. Uh, but uh, you just look around you, keep your eyes open. Uh, here's my friend again. Um, I, 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 I just am very, very much into colors, and you can see that they're, they're really all around here. Again, you know, so much of it comes from Florida scenes, the Everglades, or nearby. This one was from Everglades City. This one was taken uh, from the Greenway Trail, uh, right out of the bridge, <coughs> where you frequently can see uh, canoes uh, coming over. Uh, okay, Bob, are you? <coughs> so, again, my point is, you have a great camera and the iPhone. If you just keep three or four of the ideas I tossed out at you in mind, you'll do great. Uh, yes? Are you using any software? Uh, yeah, you take the picture yeah, well, Bob will show you one uh, type of software here. But there is, uh, if we have a little time, I can show you just what you have in iPhotos. I photo rather, because it really gives you a great potential. I hardly ever use anything, <coughs> any of the apps for photo finishing, because just about everything I want to do is already in that free app that you get called Photos. Do you ever use any of those attachments that you put in front of your... I used to, when I had an iPhone 4 or maybe even the 5, I did. I got the telephoto and I got the wide angle. It just didn't measure up to what I was capable of doing otherwise. But it was a great improvement. But again, I advise all of you, forget about focus. Forget about, uh, I mean, close-up. Moving, use that, that app where you can actually uh, telephoto. I've got two questions. First one is, on, on the uh, panoramic, how do you get away from the fisheye? And the second one is, uh, on the burst, you can eliminate, delete the ones yeah. that you don't want on burst? Yeah, there is an app that you can actually do that. You, you can can't do it you can, off of the phone? Off of the phone, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I have to say one more thing before Bob takes yeah, over here. Answer all the questions. Yeah? Answer all the questions, I don't like that. <laughs> and what you have is where um, I, uh, there is a website that you simply have to go to in order to get any detail that you would want about better use of your iPhone for photographs. I never can remember how to pronounce this guy's name. His name is Emil Pekarklis. Pekarklis, right? Um, if you want to do yourself a favor, if you're interested in iPhone photography, and write this down. The website is called iPhone Photographic School. Yeah. All one word, lowercase, iPhonePhotographicSchool.com. Yeah, I'll share the link. What Mike is talking about is the most miraculous tutorials you could ever possibly you got it. And it's been an immense help to me. And did um, you join? No, I, I did. I, jo I didn't join. I didn't attend his classes. But he gives, keeps on coming. You'll get annoyed by the number of emails right. that you get. Um, the, but they're all really good.
tips on how to improve your iPhone photo taking. Uh, email, Pat Kark was, has done a great service to anybody with an iPhone. So uh, do look up that app, or that uh, website. Okay, Bob, it's all here. Do you want to stay there? Do you want to move well, on? I, Michael asked me is print. So, Michael was talking mostly about taking pictures. I mostly into making them after I have taken them. Now, the, the prints, a uh, few of you have seen them, but the prints that I have here, uh, some of them up were taken by the latest, the 7 Plus uh, iPhone, the current version. And just fantastic the amount of sharp detail that is possible to get. And uh, I let it go. And, and you want the lights up? Pardon me? Would, would you like I, I think I let it go around. Okay. If you would want to look and then pass it on. Right. Now, here we yeah, go. What I was telling you, it's possible. The detail is phenomenal. Now, keep in mind, uh, Bob, Bob, did you take this with your iPhone 7? Yeah, this is iPhone 7, but I'm going to show... Yeah, six. as in his lecture about three or so weeks ago on the iPhone 7, it, there is an immense improvement in sharpness and color that you can get in the iPhone 7 over the iPhone 6. And also in, in iPhone 7, there is a zooming opportunity because there are two lenses. And as long as you only zoom within the range of those two lenses and you don't go beyond that, you are getting sharp pictures. But if you go beyond that, then you run into the warning that, uh, that Michael was saying. So uh, this one is panoramic. It's not a great picture, but what I suggest as he goes around, look at the detail. It was taken like <coughs> this, as Michael showed, and look at the detail that is possible to get. This is just fun. This was taken here. And the interesting part of it is not that it's a good picture, but that it was taken in this dark, this kind of darkness that we have right now. So, that what printer do you use for this? Uh, my printer is an Epson. Bob, you have a question. Bob, yeah. on that on that picture you just you had taken in here in the, in this light. Yeah. You did nothing to enhance the light of that. I you didn't Photoshop it. I, I Photoshop every picture that I take. Oh, okay. Okay. Little or much depends on the picture. Okay. But this one didn't take much. Okay. It didn't it did not take much. And uh, this is a non-panoramic version of the same place, and it both this and the panel was taken by the six S uh, camera. Okay. The, the, the last one that I sent around, uh, I was flying to Portland and my flight was delayed. I was annoyed, but I always sit at the window. It was clouds and clouds and clouds, nothing else. Just before we got to Portland, two things happened. The sun was about to set and the uh, uh, clouds broke. And it was just an amazing picture. Unfortunately, the window, as most airplanes, was dirty. So it's not a great picture, but it's amazing how beautiful that was. And the best camera, what's the best camera? What do you got? The one that you have in your hand at the time. That's exactly it. And that's why I'm showing this, because I had the iPhone in my hand at the window, and when the clouds broke, I would take that picture of the mountains and the second of the 
the settings. In addition to that, I just thought I would do one thing. But for some reason, it went out. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, you got it. That should be your screen. Yeah. Just one. Could you push three? I, I I don't think it's on three. Yeah, press cancel on three. three. It's on three. It's on three. Okay. These these are usually not on. Anyway. on the phone itself. I put it on my computer. And how many of you have Lightroom? And Photoshop Elements or Photoshop? Not too many. So there, this may not be as much interest to you except to encourage and show what can be done. Here's a picture, very often you run into the situation where it's both too bright and too dark. It's called the HDR high dynamic range and there are lots of software that you can take to process it, but ordinary processing software perfectly capable of dealing with quite extreme situations. You can see how dark this area is. You can see how washed out this bright area is. And I just want to show you that with these simple sliders that almost any of the photo processing software that you get these days, whether it's Photoshop, Lightroom, or some other, uh, you can do. Uh, they say go in the sequence of these sliders. I usually don't. Uh, but let's for the simplicity show you what happens if I do that. I can brighten this until uh, the forest, you can see the forest. What this tells you what this tells me and tells you that with my iPhone, I captured enough data that everything that's for now above the water, I have detail. I can, if I process the picture, I can bring out the detail, any part of this picture, because it's there. Uh, Similarly, if I go up with that other slider. So I could go like this. I could reduce the contrast to get a little more of everything. And get up with the shadows. And then down with the whites. And up with clarity. On the other hand, my normal process is the following. I click on default. This is more or less what a JPEG picture looks like. Than Auto is a huge improvement. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what you said. Hi, Siri. But, I myself would go back to default and I look at the picture, what bothers me most in this picture? Two things, two white water and a two dark forest. But I'm more bothered with the two white water. Why? Because that's my subject. 
the water is my subject, the, the trees are only framing it. So the first thing I want to do is to see what I can do with the water and make it as good as I can get it. When you have whites, you typically have three, three sliders. The exposure slider would brighten the entire picture. The whites would mainly work on the very white, the very bright areas, of which I have plenty, so I push it down instead of up. The exposure, I didn't really want to change it, and with the highlight, I tried to get the most detail out of the water. So as you can see, I can vary that, and I optimize the water, because that's, that's my subject here, the cascading water. Now, the next thing is, we are very black. I see how much I can do with the sh shadows, and it's plenty. And look, look at this. Even more water areas come out and be become visible. Uh, highlights I just optimized. I try not to play with it anymore because my subject was the water. It's optimum. I would like to keep it as much as possible. The clarity. Very frequently in your picture, use it to sharpen. Every photo software that you use has clarity these days. It's a more sophisticated sharpening, and uh, very often you are better off using more of that and less of the actual sharpening. Vibrance, you will act on the colors and saturation will also act on the colors. The difference is saturation will saturate your colors. The more you push, the more they get saturated. Vibrance acts on the low saturated colors only. It tends to push up and get the less saturated more colorful without killing the already saturated. So uh, another interesting feature that exists on many of the uh, processing software is sharpening. Here I sharpen, and you can probably see even on the projection as it improves. And then down here there is masking. If I push down the option key, the masking, the white tells me that it's, I'm not masking it. It's sharpening everything. I don't like that. What I try to do, is to see those leading lines that Michael was talking about, those lines that make the framing, and go until only those areas that are part of that interest get sharpened. That also helps you drawing your attention when you look at the picture where you want the attention to be of the viewer as opposed to seeing everything everywhere sharpen and kind of clutter some uh, the picture. So that was the other thing I wanted to show that pictures taken with iPhone and then put into the processing software the, uh, are have a tremendous amount of information, detail in them, and can be processed and significantly improved. Uh, Are there any uh, software programs that will allow us to uh, like set a photo to take at a certain time or in 10 seconds? Um, well, I know you can for 10 seconds, but 
you know, a time photo of a flower that's... Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, offhand, um, I, I am not sure, but yes, you can take uh, uh, a time, uh, time, uh, time, lapse. time lapse pictures. Somebody showed them. Were they, George? Were yeah, they Peter, they? Peter Falk uh, reviewed that. Were they the iPhone? What? Were they iPhone? Um, no, we did show some on the iPhone. Yeah. You can do it with your iPhone. But yes, yes, you can. Uh, does, um, does the iPhone have it? Peter Fromm. Yeah, Peter I think I, I think the iPhone has it. Right. Right. No, time lapse. Like the original. Uh, It has slow mo and time lapse. Yeah. Right. There's time lapse on. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Mike, are you going to try to review uh, the iPhone, the photo app at all? Here we go. Let's see. I I'm not hooked up to the screen, but I want to uh, show what is possible if we have a moment. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm, done. I, I'm done. The only other thing I wanted to. Say is Lightroom is a great processing software, very simple, and uh, anybody who's taking pictures and would like to improve their pictures, uh, I very highly recommend Adobe's Lightroom. Now you can also get Lightroom as a mobile. Uh, just uh, download it. We want to plug in any part. I, uh, I, I'll have to uh, work it. <laughs> no, it won't work. It won't work. It has to be hooked up to the iPhone. But let me just show you as best I can here. Uh, okay, let me just pick up the photograph here. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but when you call up your photograph, right up here there's a little icon that offers three lines with a dimple in each line. If you press on that, <clears throat> it'll bring up a screen that will allow you the option to change the darkness and brightness the same way Bob did, and also to change the colors. If I wanted to, for instance, uh, do some of the things that Bob uh, did. Uh, gonna, it'll take a while to download. But in the meantime, let me just show you this. What I, what, yeah. Uh, no, I think we're fine, Bob. What bothers me so much is when I see taking pictures, people taking pictures with an iPhone. And I swear to God, you can go to some tourist spots around the world, and here in the United States, obviously. And just about everybody that you will see We'll have a camera, an, an iPhone, uh, or uh, another type of, uh, uh, of a digital phone that will allow you to take pictures. And all of them are doing the craziest things. They will stand here like this, and they'll take a, a, a scene with a picture and then press it with their thumb. And I guarantee you, when they hold it out at arm's length like this, they're going to get camera shape. The proper way to hold an iPhone to make sure that you don't get camera shake, because remember this this uh, uh, iPhone camera, especially if you're taking a picture in the dark, is going to give you a lousy resolution. It's going to uh, make it very very easy because it will slow down the shutter speed to the point that you're going to have camera shake. So the best way of doing it is to. Hold it steady like this, and keep your elbows into your side, and then take the picture. Because if you do this, as just about everybody else will do, uh, you're not going to get the best picture you possibly can. By the way, those sharp pictures, these, uh, these, I was also leaning against something. Yeah. I was leaning yeah. and holding 
steady. You know, or if you can rest your camera on something, that's the best way of all. Okay, now again, uh, the iPhoto app, the three lines that I was mentioning, uh, if I were to press, say, the brightness here, it'll open up light, color, and black and white. Uh, if I wanted to lighten the part of the picture, now here I'm given most of the sliders that Bob had in his demonstration. If I wanted to, on the exposure, if I wanted to darken, let me see if I can get more even right here. If I wanted to darken the exposure, I could do it just by manipulating the line that I have here. You can see how it's darker or lighter. If I wanted to do some of the tricks that uh, Bob did, I can uh, go to one of the sliders called highlights and move it up and down, and it will lighten or darken areas like the sky. It won't give you the range that he had in his Lightroom or Photoshop app, but it certainly will uh, allow you to, to do a lot. And again, probably for about 90, 95% of the photographs that I edit and uh, improve is done with the photo app that you all have. You've got it with, uh, uh, when you download your uh, uh, latest uh, operating system. And then uh, if I press this little line up here again, I'll get uh, uh, contrast, highlights, and uh, shadows. Same sort of thing that he had. If I want to lighten the dark part, I'd go to shadows, and then I would just, as here shadows, so uh, uh, and I would just move the scale up and down. And you can see how it's changing all of this. That will really give you some uh, better, better photographs. Uh, I want to read you something in closing here that did you did you hook this up out to the uh, oh uh, let me just read to you some items that Neil uh, that uh, yeah <laughs> Eric I, again the last name that I can never pronounce uh, but Carcass uh, said uh, his suggestions are. For better photographs, have the main subject, have a main subject to act as a strong focal point to the picture. And that's what I showed you. Put an object, a person, an animal, whatever it is that will provide a, fo a focal point, whether you have a landscape or not. Uh, the next one is uh, find the best composition. In other words, move around or move your camera around so that you have the most pleasing competition. And the next one is keep the horizon straight. When you have the horizon in the background, make sure you move your iPhone so that you have the straight horizontal line across. And he said, don't over edit the photo. In other words, don't exaggerate the colors. Uh, and finally, he says, forget all about the zoom. Once again, the zoom will not give you a good uh, a good, clear uh, photograph. If I can, uh, uh, you can have a lot of fun with the photo ops on this. And uh, one of them is, uh, uh, hang on, let me see how I can. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, cute stuff. <coughs> This is the sort of thing, you see this on a website or on a poster. You put out your camera, press one little button and you got it. And anyone who has a cat in here can appreciate this, obviously. The cat was holding a balloon and its claws popped it. And it reads, it took Ralph six minutes to realize the balloon wasn't going to come back. If you send that to anybody that has a cat, I'm, I guarantee you they'll love it. This is another one I just picked up on the net. It was actually sent to me by uh, my other son. <laughs> and um, 
This is a shot I took uh, of a dog. He looked like he's a prisoner wanting to get out. <laughs> you can see the bars. Um, again, you know, you really could have uh, so much fun. I was in uh, Budapest in Hungary when I took this one, Bob. It showed a woman who seems to be scowling, looking at me, taking a picture of her window. But I couldn't help but relate this to the face <laughs> of you. And uh, let me see. Oh, um, my son Nicholas, sitting at the back of the room, goes absolutely bananas if anybody puts ketchup on a hot dog. In Chicago, that is the biggest sin that you can commit, particularly at Wrigley Field, where the Chicago Cubs play ball. Uh, so, jokingly, I put mustard properly on there, and then I just lowered a bit of ketchup and I sent it to him. I won't tell you the response to that. <laughs> um, but, Did that happen at birth? A big pardon? Would, did something happen at birth that caused that? <laughs> uh, so anyway, you, you get the idea. And the other thing that I often do with my phone, that I find with God said really, is I'm at Costco or Best Buy or any other store, and I want to, to read up more about an object, particularly the computer uh, device that I want. Uh, rather than take out a notebook and write it down, the serial number, the name, and all that, I just pull this out and then within three seconds I've got a picture of it. I take it home, I've got the photograph and I can look it up. There's so many ways that you can use this thing. It's absolutely marvelous. And I think we've got to get out of here. Thank you. Thank you.